Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in this video, we will explain prophylaxis of uh, wound infection uh, or prophylaxis of surgical site. Uh, in this uh, video, actually, we will uh, uh, try to learn the prophylactic use of antibiotics for surgical site. Infections may occur even in the absence of a disease state. Uh, Example is include surgical site infections and infections uh, of a distant organs via hematogenous spread that is a metastatic uh, infection. Uh, in this video, uh, we will discuss uh, this uh, surgical site infections that is the prophylaxis for surgical site infections and uh, prophylaxis for the metastatic infections will be discussed in our next video inshallah. However, although antibiotics are effective adjuncts for establishing infections, their use in preventing infections, that is prophylactic administration, is controversial and uh, less evidence-based. Uh, Post-operative infections occur approximately 6 to 9 percent of a clean contaminated uh, surgeries and as many as 40 percent in procedures involving dirty wounds, uh, whereas the perioperative antibiotics uh, can lower the infection rate to approximately 3.3 percent and uh, if you would, uh, say specifically for oral and maxillofacial surgery procedure then uh, these can be reduced by 70 percent. However, the clinician must interpret the data with uh, caution. Uh, the clinician must have justification for the prophylaxis of wound infection. The routine use of prophylactic antibiotics before every oral surgical procedure is not justified due to several reasons. Uh, first is the incidence of infection after oral surgical procedure is very low. In fact, the rates are comparable to the frequency of allergic reactions due to antibiotic usage. And uh, second reason is that the surgical site infections after routine oral surgery are minor and uh, they respond readily to antibiotics or minor procedures such as uh, intraoral incision and drainage in an office setting. Or dusri baat ye ke jo mukhtalif studies hui hain, systematic reviews hui hain, thik hai clinical trials ke regarding oral surgical procedures, they have failed to identify any post-operative deep space infections of the head and neck region. Uh, apart from uh, the first two uh, reasons uh, that are related to the infections, there are other factors. Uh, so the benefits of routine prescribing of antibiotics before every surgery uh, procedure cannot justify the increased risk of adverse reactions to antibiotics, the increased risk of promoting antibiotic resistant bacteria, financial burden on the patient and the healthcare system. Uh, therefore, uh, pre-operative antibiotics are only recommended for select circumstances. Uh, that include uh, uh, surgical procedures and uh, patient with uh, compromised host defenses. Now, longer operative times have been shown to increase the risk of surgical site infections and this has been demonstrated in multiple studies and uh, systemic reviews with meta-analysis uh, which have confirmed a consistent uh, association between increased operative times and the occurrence of the uh, surgical site infections. Uh, and in uh, hospital surgeries, uh, the incidence of post-operative infections uh, that increases significantly with operations uh, lasting longer than uh, four hours. Uh, although most oral surgical procedures are short, pre-operative antibiotics may be considered for long and complicated procedures. For example, extensive alveoplasty with placement of multiple dental implants and uh, bone crafts. The second recommendation is a, a patient with compromised ability to combat infection uh, may be prone to surgical site infections. And examples include a patient with poorly controlled metabolic disease such as diabetes mellitus, patient receiving chemotherapy or immunosuppressive medications, and those with end-stage renal disease. Uh, Pre-operative uh, and in some instances Post-operative antibiotics are strongly recommended for uh, such patients, even for minor oral surgical procedures. Dental implants, although previously thought to require pre-operative antibiotics for infection prevention, uh, 
have been shown not to benefit from this approach in systematic reviews with meta-analysis. Uh, in these studies, uh, no differences in infections rate when seen when antibiotics were used when compared with placebo or no antibiotics. Although uh, some studies have uh, higher implant success rates with antibiotics, uh, but uh, multiple co confounding variables uh, such as systemic comorbidities, smoking uh, or parafunction have habits. They uh, may lead the clinician to misinterpret the results and inappropriately prescribe the antibiotic routinely. Once a patient is deemed an appropriate candidate for preoperative antibiotics, the appropriate medication must be chosen. The ideal antibiotic should be effective against the normal flora, uh, have a narrow spectrum and have the least adverse effects. Therefore, the selection criteria are similar to that for established infections. In addition, the antibiotic must be administered so that the peak plasma concentration is at its peak during the surgical procedure with the uh, peak being higher than when antibiotics are administered for therapeutic purposes. Uh, this usually equates to roughly uh, twice the usual therapeutic dose that is at least uh, two hours and preferably one hour before the surgical procedures. Commonly used preoperative uh, antibiotic regimens are uh, listed in this table. Uh, for the antibiotic prophylaxis to be effective, the antibiotic must be given before the surgery begins and adequate plasma levels must be maintained during the surgical procedure. Once the surgical procedure is completed, continued antibiotic administration produces little if uh, any benefit, if the procedure is a short operation, a single preoperative dose of antibiotics is adequate. Considerable amounts of animal and human clinical data demonstrate that the prophylactic use of antibiotic is necessary only uh, for a time of uh, surgery because the migration of bacteria mm, into the wound uh, and the underlying tissues occur at a such a low level after closure of the wounds and formation of the blood clots that additional antibiotics are not necessary. Despite the availability of antibiotics as an aid in preventing in infections, the clinician must always adhere to strict surgical protocols including careful tissue handling, asepsis and avoidance of cross-contamination. The attitude of, oh, well, the patient is on antibiotics is an unacceptable excuse when the principles of atraumatic tissue handling and surgical asepsis are violated. So antibiotics should never be used in an attempt to overcome poor surgical technique or a lack of proper asepsis protocol. Thank you. Wish you best of luck.